If you caught our recent video on AMD's box cooler comparison, you know that I feel the Ryzen 5 3600 is a little warm for my taste. Let's see how cool we can get it. Hey there, welcome to Danny's Tech Channel. I'm Danny, and if this is your first time stopping by, we frequently talk about hardware reviews, PC builds, and sometimes do how-to videos too. Like I said in the intro, last week's episode was all about AMD's box cooler options. Today is gonna be about EK's all-in-one liquid cooler that they came out with just recently. This is a very new product from them. EK has tried to get into liquid cooling in the past and uh, they just haven't, haven't ran with it, but I think they really have a winner on their hands with this one. And what better way to test it out than using my Ryzen 5 3600 setup I put together last week. So let's check this thing out. Quick unboxing of this thing. Little disclosure, I uh, already opened this to take a look at it. So like these fans come in bags right out of the box. Uh, but anyways, I got everything pretty much exactly where it was supposed to be. So it comes with all your mounting hardware and everything. We'll take a look at that in a second. You've got EK's Vardar fans two of them. These are 120 mil fans. It has two different cables here. You have your ARGB cable as well as your PWM four pin fan header. And the cool thing is you can daisy chain them together. So if you have three, four or five fans, you can plug them into the harness that goes to the uh, AIO as well. And you can just match all your fans together. Pretty decent packaging. Um, it definitely does the job, but I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. You have your two fans, you have your radiator and pump housing, and then you have all your, your hardware to install it with. The AIO, EK's AIO is universally compatible. So it has mounting hardware for both AMD and Intel. So you got two sets of, two sets of mounting screws to go into your uh, back plates. You have your Intel back plate, which I'm not gonna be using today, but that's, uh, that's what it looks like anyways. It's got the nice little EK logo right on the corner here. Then you have your lockdown screws, as well as your uh, tension springs. This is for the top of the pump. They'll go around the sides of it. This is your AMD and Intel mounting plates. They'll actually screw onto the bottom of the pump housing here. And like I said, I'm just gonna be using AMD today because I wanna use it on my 3600. And it comes with the mounting screws for it. And then you have all your different fan screws you have some that have threads all the way down, and then you have some that have just threads at the end of it, depending on how you wanna mount your fans, if you wanna run it all the way through or not, or if you're just gonna mount it right to the um, radiator from the housing. And then you have a Y splitter for uh, connecting both fans and then connecting to one fan header on your motherboard. The pump housing itself has your PWM fan header connected to it, as well as a plug for your ARGB. It has to be a five volt, uh, RGB header for your motherboard to be able to control your pump housing um, color as well. But like I said, you can daisy chain them and connect the pump header and the fans all together. You can use it on two separate boards. So like I said, it includes your two EK Vardar S RGB fans, really clean looking. Um, they're not anything fancy though. There's no like rubber or anything to them. It's just plastic housings and then their RGB fan header or the RGB fan hub in the middle here so you can control it. But We'll have to see how they sound, if they make any kind of vibrations or anything like that. But uh, I mean, they're PWM controlled and they're RGB, so how bad can they be, right? Also, this AIO has a five-year warranty on it. Uh, I think that's a pretty good, good deal from EK. And they have their nice little logo on the front here. Um, it's like a brushed aluminum uh, decal. And then this is like a frosted acrylic glass. So that's kind of kind of nice. Um, I've heard some reviewers say that they think they can make it in their garage and stuff, but uh, I don't know. I kind of like the aesthetic of it. It's, uh, it's just like a, a clean, elegant kind of look. So from just the initial unboxing of it, it looks like quality materials. The radiator looks pretty nice. The braided hoses are nice. The fixture uh, end fittings and everything look good. Uh, it doesn't look like anything's real cheap. I, like I said, I like the frosted acrylic and uh, there's plenty of hardware cables 
They have the whole instruction book here that you can use, and it is it is a full instruction book, every type of language and everything. So full pictures, pretty standard stuff, but let's throw it on our test bench and see how it's gonna work out. After getting the pump installed and set up on the test bench, you can see everything looks really good. The RGB lights are quite nice. I'm gonna use the same type of judging scheme I did for the AMD box cooler testing. For style points and whatnot, I would say it's it's clean, simple. Style's kind of subjective. I like the RGB lights. The frosted glass look um, is really neat and the ARGB can be completely controlled, so it's uh, it's just really a, really a nice aesthetic to me. Noise levels are fantastic. The fans are extremely quiet, even at full RPM. The pump is a little louder than I would like compared to some of the other AIOs that I've used. As long as you don't have the pump on a real aggressive curve, you don't notice it. My test bench here is outside of a case. I'm sure once it's in a case, you'll have different noises and stuff like that. When I first turned the system on, the pump had really bad whine. It had air bubbles stuck in there. So I had to actually pick up the radiator and tilt it and move it around to get the uh, air bubbles to move into the tank, the radiator tank instead of in the pump head and it quieted down immediately. It was actually pretty loud before that though. Temperatures wise were great. The idle temp was anywhere between 28 and 29 C. And then Unigid Heaven was between 47 and 50 C. You know, it kind of changes the load amounts that the uh, system gets, but for the most part, it was right around 47 C. And then I ran, once again, Cinebench R20 and Blender. And you can see here from the chart, we got 65 C for Cinebench and 66 C for Blender. That's even lower than the Wraith Prism cooler that I had on the 3600 during my last testing. So, I mean, you can see from the main chart here, all the scaling is expected, I guess you could say. The cooler obviously is twice as much as an aftermarket CPU cooler would be that's not liquid cooling. And then any of the AMD solutions are obviously cheaper than that even. And then if you stick with the Ryzen box cooler, you're really, you know, you don't have to spend anything. Okay, let's take a look at the wrap up from the EK AIO 240 mil rad. I don't know if I said at the beginning or not, these coolers actually come in three different variants. It's a 120 mil, a 240 mil, and a 360 mil. So you really have your options with EK as far as like what kind of case you wanna put it in. Uh, I got the 240 mil because most of the cases that I wanna use it for have a top mount 240 location and they can't fit anything larger than that. The 360, you almost certainly have to mount it in the front. So your pricing points that I didn't get to talk about earlier are for the 120, because I didn't introduce these things, it's $90. For the 240 mil, it's $120. And for the 360, it's 155. That's really a good price considering a lot of AIOs or even more than that. For a 360 mil AIO for a lot of the big name companies, you're looking at over $200. Uh, it's a pretty good deal. The things I really like about this AIO are that it has good quality components. It has the addressable RGB on it, on the, the pump head and the fans. And like I said, you don't have to daisy chain them together. You can run the fans on a separate header than the pump if you want to, and you can change the colors accordingly, but you have to have those headers on your motherboard. So just make sure before you do your purchase that you know what you're getting into. Like I said, it has a five-year warranty on it, which in my eyes is pretty good because a lot of people build computers at least every five years, if not sooner. The only issue I had that I was confused about is if you take a look at the pump head here, it has the um, tubes in a horizontal positioning relative to the pump head rather than a vertical positioning. Most of the AIOs that I have have them vertical. So when you, when you swing them around and angle them down and stuff to be able to route your tubing, it just gives a different direction. So I'm curious to see how when I mount this, these tubes will actually like run in the case because they're either 
they're designed to either go straight up or straight down. So yeah, I'm curious to see how that's gonna mount in a case. I guess we'll find out soon. Okay, let me know down in the comments what you think of this pump and radiator AIO. Hopefully I gave you enough information about it and showed you a couple benchmark temps to see if that's something you'd wanna use in your own system. If you want step-by-step -step instructions on how to install this radiator and pump uh, AIO into your own system, come back next week and I'll do an entire walkthrough on how to do that. Also, if you liked any of the music you heard today, you can check it out over on Epidemic Sound. They have copyright free music and I'll leave a link below for you to get 30 days free if you wanna try it out for yourself. Once again, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you all in the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah.